Hello, friends. I think you've all heard of the death penalty. At one point, it was used in most countries of the world, but in recent decades, many of them have abolished this form of punishment. As of today, 53 of the world's countries retain capital punishment. However, the methods vary between electrocution, beheading, hanging, shooting, and lethal injection. It would seem that there couldn't be anything more final than a death sentence, an inevitable end to one's life. However, there have been several lucky, if you can call them that, individuals in history who miraculously survived this most terrifying procedure. And now, you'll get to learn how they managed to do it. In the United States, the death penalty is applied quite widely and frequently. The convict gets sentenced and knows the date when the sentence will be carried out. 24 hours before the execution, the convict is transferred to the so-called death row. This is where the execution will take place. The convict is thoroughly searched to prevent any attempts at escape. Also, the transfer to death row is usually the last time the convict gets to see the sunlight. From that point on, the convict stays in a special solitary cell, which is equipped better than a regular prison cell. They are closely monitored by guards. The lights out is at 9 p.m., and that marks the start of the convict's last night of sleep. Although, not many manage to fall asleep that night. It isn't all that surprising, as many inmates take this time to reflect on their lives. At 4.30 a.m., the convict is woken up, so they have time to say their goodbyes. They have until 8 a.m. to spend time with their friends and family and write a farewell letter. They are also allowed to speak with a priest or psychologist. 12 hours before the execution, the death chamber is checked to ensure everything is working properly. At 10.30 a.m., prisoners are served their last lunch. At around 3 o'clock, they are given the clothes in which they will be executed. After that, it's time for the last meal. The convicts have the right to order literally anything within the limits of their country and prison. Their request must be fulfilled. They can eat something they haven't had in years or order a lot of food and not touch it. Some inmates take this opportunity to mess with the prison guards, making them work for nothing. By 5 o'clock, people who want to witness the execution, if that is allowed, arrive at the location. Depending on the situation, these may be journalists, loved ones, or even strangers. The actual sentence will be carried out in the evening from 6 to 9 o'clock. The convict leaves the cell and goes to the death chamber, where everything is already prepared. Willie Francis experienced much of what you have just heard. Willie is the only person who miraculously survived the electric chair execution. At the age of 16, he was charged with the murder of his employer, a pharmacy owner, and sentenced to the most severe punishment. In 1946, Francis was strapped to the electric chair. When it was turned on, he screamed, Take it off! Take it off! Let me breathe! The executioners were shocked, unstrapped the prisoner, and sent him back to death row. A thorough examination revealed that one of the contacts on the chair was faulty. It had been installed by a heavily intoxicated prison guard. Willie's lawyer saw it as a chance to get his client off of death row and asked for a commutation of the sentence to life imprisonment. However, he couldn't convince anyone. Almost exactly a year after this unique case, Willie was sent to the electric chair again, and this time, everything worked out as it should. Willie Francis's case is 100% incredible. However, it isn't unique. Surviving execution in the electric chair isn't the craziest thing that can happen. After all, a lot depends on the functioning of the chair itself. But what about surviving an execution by firing squad? And we're not talking about just one shot. This is what happened to Venceslao Moguel. In March 1915, during the Mexican Revolution, a student named Venceslao Moguel fought on the side of the rebels. He and many other participants in the riot were arrested and subsequently sentenced to execution by firing squad. Soldiers put the revolutionary up against the wall and shot him eight times, but that wasn't enough. A control shot was fired directly into Moguel's head. However, Venceslao still managed to survive. Moreover, he even had the strength to wait until it got dark and crawl three blocks to reach his friends, 
who provided him with medical assistance. No further charges were brought against him, and in the 1930s, the whole world heard his story. The man lived a long life after the incident and died at the age of 86. Amerigo Dumini was also sentenced to execution. He was an Italian hitman who served in Libya during World War II. When the Italians retreated, he stayed behind to lead a group of spies and saboteurs. It was there that he was captured by British soldiers on suspicion of espionage. The sentence was handed down almost immediately. Execution by firing squad. 17 shots were fired in Dumini's direction, but not one of them hit him. He was, of course, still punished for his actions. Dumini spent eight years in prison. He then returned to Italy, where he was received surprisingly well and got a generous pension. In olden times, executions were mainly carried out by hanging, like in the case of Joseph Samuel, who lived in the late 18th century. Samuel and his gang were charged with robbing a wealthy woman's house and killing a policeman. Other gang members, including the leader, were acquitted due to lack of evidence, but the woman identified Joseph, and he was found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging. What followed was a series of inexplicable events. A crowd gathered to witness the execution. The nooses were securely fastened around the necks of the condemned. The other criminal died, but Samuel's rope snapped and he fell, dislocating his ankle and losing consciousness. The executioner hastily prepared another rope, but this attempt to execute the man failed as well. The noose slipped off Joseph's neck when he touched the ground. The crowd was already starting to scream, asking for mercy for the man. But the executioner had already prepared the third rope. But it also snapped. Samuel fell to the ground and stumbled, trying to avoid landing on his sprained ankle. The witnesses were outraged and asked to stop torturing the man. The governor who arrived at the scene studied the situation and commuted the robber sentence to life imprisonment. Something similar happened with John Henry George Lee. We'd rather not go into the details of his crime, but it was quite gruesome. In those times, in the 1880s, execution was guaranteed for such acts. John Lee was sent to the gallows. His executioner was a professional who always carried out sentences perfectly, but something went wrong that day. John was supposed to fall through a trap door that was supposed to open under him, but the trap door didn't open. The executioner pushed the lever, but it didn't work. John was taken away while the device was examined. However, it turned out to be working perfectly without the convict. Lee was brought back to the gallows, but the trap door didn't open again. John was taken away once more. Over the next 20 minutes, several workers lubricated and tested the device, which worked perfectly every time. They say that while testing the trap door, the executioner himself fell through it and injured his leg. However, even the third attempt failed. The trap door didn't work. The audience was furious because public executions were an important event and a source of entertainment back then, but things weren't going as planned. The executioner was tired of pulling the lever and John was very agitated. The court secretary ordered the execution to be canceled and John was taken back to his cell. Setting a new execution date was considered pointless and immoral, so his punishment was commuted to life imprisonment. But don't think that hangings always went awry like this. These were extremely rare exceptions. In most cases, everything worked as intended, as demonstrated by the story of Maggie Dixon. Maggie got pregnant while waiting for her sailor husband to return home, which was a rather unfortunate situation for a woman in 1724. She tried to conceal her pregnancy, which was punishable by law, but she was unsuccessful and thus was sentenced to death by hanging. Maggie was hanged and a doctor confirmed her death. Her body was placed in a coffin. On the way to the cemetery, something incredible happened. The coffin lid moved and a groan was heard coming from inside. Dixon was alive. Less than an hour after dying, she managed to stand up and walk on her own. When she arrived in town, all charges against Maggie were dropped. Eventually, she got married, had five children, and lived for about 40 more years. Philip Fabricius worked as a secretary for the executor in Prague 
when the Protestant uprising occurred in 1618. He and other officials were sentenced to death by falling from a height of 20 meters, approximately the seventh store of a typical building. The exact details of what happened are unclear, but all those executed managed to survive. Philip, in particular, ended up with only a few bruises and scratches. After that, Fabricius immediately fled to Vienna, where he lived another 13 years. Friends, that's all for today. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.